So carers are family members, friends, they might even be neighbours who look after somebody who is frail aged, someone with a disability or someone who might have a chronic condition. I've probably spent about four hours a day uh, with my brother, deciphering his stories, um, trying to work out his needs so that I can um, try and help him out, take him on little trips, try and include him in socialising with others, shopping, washing. Most of it's mentoring, trying to keep things real for him. Um, so it takes a fair bit of my time. And on top of that, I, I also work full time in the cancer centre. The caring role is quite complex. Um, and you have to keep, a, keep your battery full to be able to deal with it all. So it keeps your life pretty full. My name is Ruth McIver, currently retired. I care for my 34 year old son, Rob, who has severe autism. He's very dependent on me for his caring needs. Rob needs someone on hand 24 seven. So he has um, severe communication challenges. Although he has some language, that language is very much idiosyncratic. He may not want you close, but as soon as he wants you, then you need to be on hand and available for his needs. Well, the logistical challenges for me are sort of, um, it's time, that extra time when I suppose normally you'd be having your own normal life, um, you know, relationships, um, you know, taking time out to meet new people and things like that. A lot of my time's sort of compromised to care for my brother and do activities which sort of include him, um, try and get him active, um, try and sort of build his life uh, as well as um, have a bit of a life for myself. I would find at various times I would realise that I was doing nothing to develop myself or feel that I was away from full-time caring. Um, so I would look for opportunities to do something in the hours that I did have available. Um, I think a painting class for a couple of years that I would go to one day a week. That was quite separate and in fact I didn't tell them about Rob for a long time. Um, there were My work was really important in that when I went to work I was a professional person um, I was in control of things that I could control, which is, was a lot different to the situation at home. Certainly my work was a very important part of maintaining some sense of being more than just Rob's carer. You can't help anyone else unless you look after yourself. I've learnt that through um, becoming like a shell. You take on all these roles and wear these different uniforms, but if underneath it you haven't got a strong battery, and you haven't got the tools to care for yourself, then you really uh, you'll end up in a bit of a heap. Uh, tools that I've found are, are things like mindfulness, meditation, Tai Chi, anything that gives you that space and to create a refuge for yourself. So a daily practice where you've got a refuge away from your caring role seems to be something that works well. One of the things that I believe strongly now especially is that it's really important to build the resilience in the people we care for so that they can be comfortable in a respite situation because that builds their independence but it also helps us because as carers because we can have a break when we need it. So we know that carers are vital in the healthcare sector. Uh, but carers can do themselves a favour by uh, exposing themselves to any education, information and any supports that might be out there, learning new skills, being inquiring, asking the doctor why, asking the nurse, can I help with that routine, can I practice that, are all positive things for carers to do, not being passive in the care being assertive, asking questions, makes them a better advocate for the person that they're looking after and actually makes them a better informant for the healthcare professionals that are supporting them both in that caring role. The advice I'd give to, to carers out there is to look after yourself, take that extra time to, to fill your battery because um, it's so important for you to, um, to stay topped up and take that time out to 
to keep your battery full because you definitely deserve it. If I was to offer advice to other carers, I would say look after yourself, make sure that you have support team around you, people you can talk to about the things that are bothering you. Try to create a support network around the person you care for too so that you can have a break sometimes. So not only are carers vital to the health and well-being of the person that they look after, they're a key to health professionals doing a good job in supporting um, the person that they look after, but they're key members of our community as well. So as a community, we do need to recognise the vital role of carers, make sure that we can do something as a community to recognise and support those carers so that they can maintain their caring role for as long as they, they want to, as long as they need to. It really is the gel in keeping our community together. They are our partners in healthcare delivery. <laughs>